Hey there, Chad here for the AI Content Dojo, and in this video, oh, I'm super excited. I want to piggyback off of the exciting new features that are just released, or that were just released by the Conversion AI team just a few short minutes ago. Uh, Dave has given me a, a few days of early access to get this ready for you, and um, <laughs> Until now, the most effective way of kind of crafting content using Jarvis was through the forms. You know, the, the, the things that are over here on the side in the power mode, these templates, they are forms that you fill out to get the content that you need. And that was really kind of the best way of, of getting the content that you, that you would need. Sure, you could sparingly use the long form assistant to write some, but it was kind of a little bit clunky, wasn't it? Um, that's not conversion AI's fault. That's mostly due to open AI's rules, but not anymore. With the acquisition of Shortly, Jarvis is now capable of much of Shortly's tricks. Most notably, the ability to command Jarvis using plain language. In other words, you just ask. Just like you do in Shortly, you just ask. And uh, <laughs> it's quite good. Now, you've probably already seen the announcement by now by, by the Conversion AI team, you know, their webinar. And if you haven't, you know, you should definitely check that out. But here in this video, I want to show you some of the capabilities that the new Jarvis kind of brings to the Conversion AI community. Things that the Shortly crew have enjoyed for a few months now. Stick with this to the end, too, because the grand finale that I'm going to showcase really shows the power of what Jarvis is capable of now. Okay, first I want to start off with how do you command... Jarvis. So to set that up, let's first think about how it was done inside of Shortly. Uh, in Shortly, you would use the instruct command. It would look something like, like this. Instruct, square bracket, the content that you wanted to get from Shortly, and then closing the square bracket to run that, right? You don't have to do that in Jarvis. It's, it's actually easier in Jarvis than, than that. And really, what you're going to be doing is just using a single line that would contain the command that you're you're expecting to run. And Jarvis will then run your command. Uh, let's now kind of just sort of dive in a little bit and think about this for a second. Um, I wanna to touch on the plain language capability here. Essentially, what you will be able to do is just simply ask Jarvis for things that you want from your, from your content or for your content, such as write a headline for the above or maybe summarize the above in 155 characters. Uh, and no, Jarvis isn't going to be able to do everything that you ask perfectly, but the power that this brings gives you tons of room for kind of experimenting, thinking of new ways to test theories and, and get some you know, interesting commands to speed up your content creation workflows. And this is where it's time to kind of think about some of those experiments. And some things that I'm gonna show you here will, will be kind of interesting to you, not necessarily completely useful in all cases, but fun and kind of sort of intended to kind of open your eyes to what might be possible here. And so I guess real quick first, the UI. If you're a shortly user, this looks really familiar to you. And you basically get a title, a content brief, which was called an article brief in shortly. New here is keywords and there's language. Mm -hmm. I don't think that there's a lot done here yet. This is gonna be something I'm sure that the Conversion AI team is going to expand upon in the future, but it hints at giving the ability to use Jarvis in multiple languages besides English, which is very powerful. I imagine here there's gonna be some other things in the future that, um, such as tone or something like that. That's not from the Conversion AI team, I'm just guessing. It's something that would be really cool to come to this, this uh, canvas uh, going forward. And then you get the output length, you got short, shorter, medium, and longer, and then the compose button. This was called write for me and shortly, uh, and then a redo kind of button to redo your things. And if you want some uh, tips on what the commands are and how to do things inside of Jarvis, you get this cool little button over here, and that's the UI. Now let's jump into doing something cool with the new commands. 
I got some notes over here. They're just called Jarvis commands. But really what I'm going to do is just show you like maybe how you would do acronyms. Like let's just say that maybe uh, <laughs> maybe you're trying to craft an interesting acronym for your brand. You know, I, mean, I don't know. Jarvis can help you. Let's um, actually don't want to paste it that way because interesting feature of this bear writer over here is I can copy and enrich text like that. Okay. So let's say that I've got three words. The fourth word is, is just eluding me. I want to spell fast for the acronym for my company. And I said, like, okay, what's, what's something that could come with a T now in Jarvis, this is, since this is the first time I'm running, it, I'm going to explain it to you. Jarvis, you just hit command enter at the end of your command, right? Just like this, finish the, finish the list with a single word, starting with a T I can hit command enter. And hopefully Jarvis gives me a letter, a word that starts with a T traveler. Okay. Focus, action, success, traveler. I might not want that. Let's undo that. I want to show you now where you can hold down shift command enter, just like in shortly. And this should stay try. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> sure try oops <laughs> sorry i'm still getting used to um the keyboard commands and stuff on mac i've been a windows user forever okay so there you go jarvis is able to get you a word that starts with a t now that's might not be the word that you want uh but you can just keep redoing it until you get one that's really cool for you all right let's take that away let's talk about the before after bridge now this is where it gets pretty interesting the before after bridge is a copywriting formula, right? And, uh, of course this is a conversion AI specialty, right? Copywriting. Uh, you could easily just kind of switch over here into power mode, uh, find the before after bridge, right? And just fill this in to get the content that you want. Oh, look, there's some beta language features here. This is new. Very nice. I'll cover that in a future video. Um, oops. <laughs> <laughs> gotta be careful that's not how you get rid of that you go over here when you're in power mode you go over here to, to focus and i think that um this is not what it's going to be called in live um i'm doing this early in some beta code so i think that they might actually be calling this shortly like feature this canvas where you just write with jarvis and using commands might be called boss mode or something like that in the future uh but the before after bridge now you could use that template but i want to show you a way where I'm actually, I don't want to copy that whole thing. Let me show you this first. There's a couple of important things about what I just pasted in here. One birdie, right? Birdie is, uh, well, birdie is a revolutionary new backyard bird feeder with a 360 degree ultra eight ultra HD camera. But that's something that there's no way Jarvis knows anything about it, right? It's just something that I made up. It's not a real product. Although funny enough that after I, started talking about my my fictitious bird feeder facebook has been showing me some bird feeders with cameras <laughs> so thanks facebook uh so my point is though since birdie is something that jarvis doesn't know about i went through and i provided a pretty decent description of the product so that when i want to do things to that description like a before after bridge or an ida or something like that you just, now you can just ask. So I'm going to hold down shift. Well, let's, yeah, well, shift command enter. Let's let, let's let the command stay there and see what Jarvis gives us. Before, after, where's the bridge? Are we going to make it? That's a lot of output. It didn't make it. Okay. I guess it's good that it shows that. Um, what you'll find is that many times it will make it. So now we probably have to do something like bridge and compose which is command j and let's see if it yeah there we go we get the finish out of it all right so <laughs> and then one thing too right now in this beta stuff uh when you run the command with shift so that the command stays uh the content comes in like right there at the cursor instead of dropping down but i've already let them know they're going to be fixing that and it's pretty cool so there's a before or after bridge for that product. I didn't have to go through the forms, the templates, and you notice that I haven't even done anything in the title, no content description, no keywords, nothing. Uh, Jarvis will do a better job when you start filling these things in and have more context for him to work with. So let's move on to the next one. It's an interesting one. So before or after bridge was maybe something functional for a marketer. 
I want to talk about baby names now. <laughs> now, this is interesting. So, uh, this sort of alludes to the more power that this that this tool now has, right? Kind of under the surface, there's this, who knows, and probably an unlimited number of things that we can do now. But let's say, let's give me a list of name ideas for my new baby girl. Run it. Should get a list. Mm -hmm. Leah, Lucy, Sophie, Scarlett. What if I wanted only names that started with a C? Okay, let's run that. We should get some C names. Caden, Carter, Claire, okay. What if you wanted to do it by nationality, where you wanted a list of Indian baby girl names that start with an S? We should get that list. Yep. <laughs> it's so cool, isn't it? Um, yeah, Jarvis is happy to oblige. So that's that's names. That was just a fun one. Let's how about a, a letter to a friend? Let's let's see what we can do there. A letter to a friend. Let's say that they, there's a new Apple product coming out in November. You know, iPhone typically does come out in around November time, time frame. Let's see if the friend if you want to write a letter to a friend about it. Dear friend, hope you're doing well. I was wondering you thinking about the upcoming release of the iPhone 8. Whew, that's a little ancient. Let's change let's change that to 13 probably and fix that cuz Grammarly doesn't like it for of the iPhone. Okay. So the other nice thing, Grammarly works just fine inside of this blank canvas here, which is really nice. So when you need to kind of keep up with grammar, with your grammar and, and checks and stuff like that while you're in the process of writing, if you find it annoying, of course, just go up here and turn it off in the browser like this. And then you don't have that problem. So that's just a really quick letter to a friend kind of thing. It could probably be a the start of an email or something like that as well. It's pretty easy. But let's move on to the grand finale, right? This is the last thing I want to show you because it kind of really showcases a bunch of power all in one. And I don't want to give you too much up, up front. I want to be able to let you kind of experiment uh, uh, your own ideas and things going forward. Okay, check this out. Let's say that we're going to write an article about dining in Tokyo on a budget. What does a typical blog post kind of, what is it made up of, right? You, you probably, a simple one would have like an introduction, probably an outline and then just a conclusion, just a, a real simple, you know, um, article. So let's use Jarvis and let's get an introduction to dining, uh, in Tokyo on a budget. Tokyo is a city known for its food all along the streets. You'll find restaurants, eateries displaying their wares. Mm -hmm. Pretty cool. All right. And you might use that. It, it might be okay. You know, if that's, if that's your thing, you might use that. That's a, not a, not a bad bit of content. Might redo it a few times to get the introduction you're really looking for. But again, this is very similar to just going over into power mode and looking up the, was it intro, blog post intro. You might do, you, you could of course use, oops. Uh, let's do blog, blog post intro. Of course you could use this to do everything. And, and it's all scrunched up like this because I'm zoomed way in for the video. It looks more like this. Right. Okay. So back to focus mode, because I want to use the new the new capabilities of Jarvis to do this. All right. So why, write an outline. Uh, there are about five tips for dining in, in Tokyo cheaply. Let's get an outline. Command enter at the end of that, right? One, two, three, four, and five. Is it going to keep going? Nope. All right. Consider that your outline. You might kind of clean it up into some headlines and stuff like that, but it's a pretty decent flow of thought. Um, a narrative thread to keep your, your article going. And let's do a conclusion to the above now. This should get us a nice little finisher paragraph that we can use to kind of cap off our, our article, our blog post, and then we're, we're good to go. And it's pretty cool, right? This is a pretty fast workflow, I think. But I do kind of want to bring up some caveats to this. You're the writer, right? Jarvis is your AI assistant in this case. Please use this wisely. You know, keep your reader in mind when you're finishing off your content. Don't just blast through the content just to get content done. You know, create with a purpose. You know, you're trying to serve your reader. You know, give them what they need based on what they searched in Google, right? That's the very reason they're even there reading your content in the first place. So do that, you know, kind of edit it, bring it to your voice, make sure that it's not overly fluffy, that it kind of quickly gets to its point, but also thoroughly answers the reason why they're there at all. 
Um, and you know, do that and you'll be very successful with this workflow going forward. Okay. So before I really kind of close this out, one last thing I want to say before I end this video is with this new capability in Jarvis, there's an almost unlimited amount of capability here, right? It's up to your imagination now. Now I maintain a compendium of interesting kind of use cases over on the AI Content Dojo website where members of the AI Content Dojo Facebook group and I kind of experiment and share our interesting finds. And I'll have a link to that in the description uh, of this video below. But if you find something really cool, like a really cool way to command Jarvis, then please share. I'd really love to add it to the compendium for everyone to learn from. And that's it. That's it for this tutorial. Thanks for staying this long. If you're not a Conversion AI user yet and you would like to subscribe to it, I would be really thankful if you use the link in the description below. Con the Conversion AI team will give me a small commission to support the dojo at no extra cost to you. And I would be forever, forever thankful. And with that said, that's it. And until next time, take care.